Good morning fellow campers, today I'm looking at doing some more electrics. started to run some of the cables through but um, I keep changing my mind so I'm kind of going back to it and looking at different areas plus I forget cables which I'm putting in as well. So um, let me show you what I've done so far. Now because I've got so much coax coming through here protecting the cables and I do actually want to bring my cables out through the panelling so that I can have them neatly behind the panels but coming up or coming through holes etc. It's going to push the panel off and these are obviously pushing the panel off slightly. And the plastic clips which I've bought, which are longer, don't actually, um, still don't grip it. So what I've done, I've used some M6 rivnuts. Fortunately, you need to drill a 9mm hole for M6 rivnuts. And the holes are actually in the van itself, which take the plastic clips, are 9mm. So that worked really well. So this is what I've used. 9mm drill, 9mm rivnut, and this. And that's now going to allow me to fix the panel on nicely. It's going to obviously the panel is going to bow a little bit because of the tubing, but it won't be pushing off, it'll stay on there nice and in place. So it looks a bit messy in here at the moment, but these wires are all coming from various fitments, which will be the reading lights, the awning light, auxiliary feeds, charging ports, the fridges down there, um, the water pumps there. So what I'm trying to do every piece of wire that's coming through the vehicle has got conduit on it. These down here. Blue one being the mains power lead coming in, the black one being this one is the solar panel wire coming in, this one is the feed from the C Tech. So, but everything is actually um, fitted out with coax to protect it coming through. These panels are really sharp, so I definitely you need to use coax. And over here, this is what I'm mounting my control board on. So this is the rear arch panel and what I've done is I've put some board, this is um, hard board, white, just on the back of my panel just so that it looks nice and neat. And this really needs a bit more space around it so what I'm actually going to do, I've noticed there's the vents here, here and on the top. This does sit quite close to the top of my panelling so I'm going to put a vent in the panel to allow that to get air in there sort of thing so hopefully that sort that out. But this is the CBE unit that I'm installing so I'm trying to keep as much as I can on this board here is my shunt there's a few more components to go on here yet but uh, that's where I am so far now with my CBE I thought it'd make it easier to actually make up a separate loom so this actually goes into the CBE itself the unit so what I've done is I put a lot of plugs on the end and labeled each one as to what they are the reason being what I want to do is actually just rather than keep putting every these out each time I want to add a wire as I work my way around I thought it'd be easy just to put some plugs on there so I never have to once that's plugged in that can stay in and I never have to put it out again but I can get access to all the other plugs just down here and then I'm done with the loom coming through the vehicle on each one I put a double plug and with a corresponding tag telling me which one goes into which one of these plugs I think it's just going to make it easier Especially when I'm trying to find things. If anything should go wrong, I know which plug to remove because I'll keep the labels on there. So on here, a lot of people wonder about on the CBE unit, you have two battery indicators as to what the, the amperage is in each battery. Now, if you don't have the live connected up, the live sorry, if you don't have the van battery connected up, it tends to flash. So what I'm doing is I'm running a six mil cable, which is this one here. That's coming from my starter battery on the vehicle. I've removed the R32, I think it's called a diode in here, um, to, so, so therefore the unit will not be charging my starter battery. I've got a, a CTEC charger for doing the charging, but what it does do is provides just enough power here that it allows me to be able to read what my starter battery is and it'll give me a warning if it gets too low. But it's not actually going to be charging the starter battery because I have removed the little diode. I think it's called a diode, <coughs> which you require to do. These are all the plugs that are coming from here. So earlier I made a a harness which incorporated all the plugs behind the ball there's a lot of plugs there <coughs> I'm only using so many but I wanted to leave them in there okay so I think I've done the electrics I'm just trying to walk you through what I've done so far this is the CBE um, units which I'm using here this is our main fuse box sort of thing so from there I've got a power lead which is actually this one uh, I've got one coming through from the bottom here which is actually the main power lead coming off of here so I've got a 50 amp fuse direct to the kill switch. From the actual kill switch I will have another lead coming out which is going to be running off this 
the uh, leisure battery. So it goes into the kill switch, goes from the kill switch, goes for a 50 amp fuse, runs, runs underneath here. It's big, I know it's a lot bigger wire than it needed to be, but I just kind of thought, well, I'm using it, I'll keep it all um, even and same diameter. So that goes into the bottom of my fuel. That's the main power supply coming in. Same with the earth. I'm running the same sort of thickness earth is going up to my bus bar, which is coming off. That's it. This bar here is going down here, going to a big bolt, which is the chassis, which I've checked is actually earthing. But obviously that's all coming off this one here, which is my shunt. I have another earth lead, which will come down here and go to the leisure battery. So two leads still to be made, one off the shunt, one off the kill switch, going to the leisure battery. So from a shunt, go up to my bus bar, which as I say, it's already earthed by this lead here. And the same lead, bus bar is also feeding the control. Down the bottom here is my RCD, which I've got running this blue cable coming in. The blue one, it's the marine cable, and in the bottom comes in feeding this fuse box. This is the one that actually came with the kit. Uh, got a kill switch test and two other fuses there. Comes out of here. This is what we call, uh, I think it's called an electrical junction box. They've got basically it's got four outlets. So one feeds in, then I can take four out of there. So effectively what I'm doing that is what this blue wire is and this yellow wire is. The blue one's going over, blue wire is going over to the battery charger because that's going to, only going to be running on mains. I haven't got it running on, on the CB system. It's just pretty going to be running on mains. So it's mains feeding that. And there's a yellow cable coming out of this junction box, just under here. And this is this cable here, which is going to go to a, a double socket, which we're going to have in our just, um, just, I suppose, control board up here. This is the CTEC. You've got the live feed coming from the starter battery, coming into here. This smaller lead goes, is the ignition lead, which you need for um, spark alternators. And that's going to go back to the dash, where I'll be setting there's a fuse going to be in line with that, which is at that end, and that'll be going into the dash uh, to connect to uh, an ignition fuse. This one here is going to be the earth. That's going to go straight to the big earth bolt. Again, it's all there for it's all going past the shunt, so everything going in here is the shunt's going to be the main one, so it'll record everything. Also, on this one, we're actually having solar panels, which we're actually running through our CTEC. This little um, wire down here, I got in touch with them. I have a 100 watt solar panel. They recommended there for a 10 amp fuse. So we've got a, a few little fuse in there. So that's the going to the solar panel. And this one here will be going from here to my start at my leisure battery. So effectively that's going to be charging up the leisure battery. So that's the system so far. It all seems to work. I've done a, a dummy test. We've connected up the main power lead to the LCD controller. We've had everything working up. Doesn't appear to be any um, shorts or anything. Everything's working fine. We've also run a test through a plug to the RCD to make sure everything's connected in there, that's always going to be fine. So what we're going to do now is put it all back together. This, this group of wires here, sorry, this group of wires are going to be running my lights on a four-way switch. So we've got, we're going to have um, reading lights, we've got spotlights up there, and we've also got, so it's two reading lights, one at each end, a spotlight, and we've also got some LEDs that we're going to be running to the four-way switch. And one cable here is actually coming from the CTEC, which I'm actually using a 20 amp fuse running from the CTEC. Uh, sorry, 20 amp fuse running from the CBE, which is actually going to provide power to the four-way switch, and then all the USBs are coming off of that four-way switch. Down here we have two wires. One of them is going directly to the fridge. This is a 25 amp wire, and we've got another wire a bit further along here somewhere, which is going to be feeding, which is a 15 amp, which is going to be running to the water pump. So I think that's where we are right now. These are quite daunting when you look online about setting them up, but they're actually not too bad if you just do it methodically, I, I assume. Mine seems to be working around the moment, so I don't want to tempt fate, but uh, it does seem to be okay at the moment. Okay, let's take you inside my electrical cupboard. There's my RCD. Positive bus bar, negative bus bar, 50 amp fuse, which is coming from the kill switch to the control panel, which is the CB, CBE PC210. CTEC, what I found with the CTEC, I unfortunately didn't get the best voltage, so looking online, it, I had my negative coming into my from my solar panel going to the bus bar. 
and they recommend putting the negative straight on the CTEC. So that's what I've done, it appears to be working okay now. In the far corner up there is the charger running off the mains, the leisure batteries. These are my two leisure batteries. I've got two, they're actually telecommunication batteries. But reading up on the spec and getting in touch with the company, he said they're probably overkill for what we actually need. I'll show you what they're called. I think the straps might be in the way. There you see, it says SBS. They're um, I think 91 volts, 91 amps each. Got them running in parallel. Give me more power that way. The vent at the top is part of the units themselves, which is quite handy because when we're parked up and the battery is being charged via the charger, via the mains, we should have vent 30 centimeters in front of it, which is probably close to it here. But obviously, what's great is we can just move the take the vent out the top of the units that allow more air in here as well. That's my shunt. Yeah, it's a 250 amp shunt going in there. So these are the plugs I've got. This top one with a rubber cap on it, which is a waterproof cap, is it's just a two pin plug. And the reason I'm using that one, that one's for my solar panel, because my solar panel is not mounted on the top of the vehicle. I keep mine portable so that I can follow the sun around with it. It seems to be more efficient that way. So in order to get the power into the van, I've just been using this little two pin plug. The bottom one, this one here is for my electricity. So it's a standard three pin plug. Three pin, and this one is a two pin. But this three pin plug, this three pin plug provides electricity into the vehicle from um, shore power, you want to call it, or campsites, etc. It's just a nice way of doing it, and more subtle than the traditional box um, that you mount on the side of the van. Not that you can see much under here, but those two plugs on the outside run through separate coats, a conduit up into here. And there is actually a bung on the underside of the chassis that my two were able to come in. I think it's actually for the parking sensors running inside. But I was actually able to get those two in that bung, so therefore it's a nice watertight um, entry into the vehicle as well.